back here now on the show to talk some more about the Philadelphia Eagles. I just finished talking yesterday about Jalen Hurts. Is he a top 15 quarterback? Breaking news, he is, obviously. There were questions about that from Fox's analyst Nick Wright by questioning it a little bit just based on the performance of last year and how bad the Eagles did as a whole. It wasn't just on Jalen Hurts, but really on this entire team. And now we had Lane Johnson, one of the established veteran leaders on this team, not just on offense, but on the entire team with Jason Kelsey retiring, with uh, Fletcher Cox also retiring. He really now steps into the limelight as one of the biggest leaders on this team, along with Brandon Graham and uh, Jalen Hurts, obviously, as well, being the quarterback. But Lane Johnson, one of the veterans on this team, like I mentioned, made an appearance on NFL Network's The Insiders, a show that they have on the NFL Network. And he discussed the expectations for the Eagles in 2024 after starting 10-1, and then finishing 1-5 um, and in the last six games. Not the start and finish you want, obviously. It reminds me of the Steelers the a few years back when they were 11-0 and or 12-0, and and then they lost their last like five or six games as well, and they went out in the first round of the playoffs exactly like the Philadelphia Eagles did. So it reminds me of that, but how do the Eagles get back to their dominant ways like, it, like they showed in 2022 when they made the Super Bowl and they were this close from winning it, but... Some crucial mistakes in those in that game cost them, but they have the talent. There's no doubt that they have the talent here. And Lane Johnson said on their expectations that obviously we have to go prove things and we are eager to do so. But when you just look at the guys walking around the building, we've got size, we've got speed, and guys are willing to work. And the main story, unfortunately, like I said for the Eagles last year, leaving a bad taste in everybody's mouths with how bad they finished, with how discombobulated the offense looked, with the circus of moving Sean Desai up to the booth. Is he going to be on the field? Giving the responsibilities of play calling to Matt Patricia. The offense not looking efficient at all with Brian Johnson. Is Nick Sirianni calling it? There's a lot of moving pieces that not just a that just doesn't happen in a steady team that is rolling, that is running smoothly into the playoffs where they are at the best point at their their season at that point. Ideally, going into the playoffs, you want to be playing your best ball, but the Eagles were obviously doing the opposite of that, and they want to fix it. And it's not like they need these catastrophic changes or uh, just these massive changes that they have to make because, like I mentioned, they have the talent. A.J. Brown, Devontae, Jalen... Um, And on the defensive side of the ball, it's a little bit more dicey, but they did a good job of addressing a lot of those things in this year's offseason. So off of that, they brought in Saquon, which was obviously the biggest addition and the biggest improvement that they made to try and fix some of their offensive struggles, like I mentioned. And Lane Johnson also spoke about that and how Saquon Barkley um, could be a massive help for them this year when he said, when you see what he can do at, at the running back position and we can flex him out at receiver, he can go. It's unbelievable. I never thought he would be playing for us, but here he is. I know he's excited. We're definitely excited up front. I think he's poised for a big, big year. And as of Tuesday, DraftKings Sportsbook has the Philadelphia Eagles as third favorites, as third favorites to be in the Super Bowl this year. And that's where my question now starts to pop up. Should the Philadelphia Eagles, if you look at their roster, top to bottom, offense and defense, should they be considered the favorites at this point? I know DraftKings has them as the third favorites to represent the NFC East, but should they be the favorites overall to make the Super Bowl? AFC and NFC, should they be the favorite team to go and represent the NFC Conference in the Super Bowl? And also to go along with that a little bit, what is considered a failure now because we're talking about Super Bowl already and we're just getting into July. What is considered a failure for this team? Because with so much hype being built up from me and from uh, just the rest of the media, rightly so because of how good this team is. Um, Kelsey said, Manny, what do you think of the Chargers? The Chargers are um, are a good team. Uh, they're an interesting team, I should have said, just because the Chargers are doing something that not a lot of the NFL is doing. They are really buying into this idea of being more of a bully style of an offense, being more run heavy, more in your face, winning the game of the uh, trenches and not being so high powered, high scoring. It is 
ideally you want to be high scoring in this NFL, obviously, but I think they're doing it a different way, and I really like what Jim Harbaugh is doing, going against the typical quarterback, getting out in a five-wide, four-wide formation, just throwing it 40 to 50 times a game. I think it's going to be certainly different, and I think a lot of people won't really like it at first, but he's had success in the NFL. Then it translated to college. I have no doubt that he'll find a way to make this team good again. And it's been a long time. I think they've definitely deserved to be good with Justin Herbert and the talent that they just have from top to bottom in that organization. I like I like their team and how it's made up, but it's no secret that I would like to see some more talent on there. Getting rid of Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, and those sort of players. I think they need excitement, but it's definitely not in a situation where they're not going to be good at all. It's going to take some time, but I like what they're doing um, over there in Los Angeles. But back to the Eagles and talking about should they be favorites and should they be considered um, the favorites for the NFC and what is considered a failure this year for them um, with so much hype being brought into this team right away. What is considered a failure, I would probably say not getting to the NFC Championship because you don't have a good excuse to not get there right at this point because last year they were they were 10-1 and one at one point last year. You don't get to be 10-1 and one and be considered mediocre or a fraud. I know they went out in the first round of the playoffs and that would suggest that they're obviously frauds, but it, to me it was more so that they just didn't have the right pieces in play to really be a contender because this team they have the talent on this team but some of the pieces that really get you over the hump and get you to those places where um you win the battle off of the field you win the chess match off of the field rather than just on more talent than the other team on the field that's where they were struggling in my opinion and Eric says DeAndre Swift wasn't bad is the signing of an injury-prone Saquon Barkley worth letting Swift go. With Kelsey retired, the offensive line just lost its soul. I, I agree. I definitely agree. Would it been better to sign a great offensive lineman? It is interesting with that offensive line because they are very good just where they stand right now with Mylotta, Lane Johnson, and Landon Dickerson. Three of those guys probably can make a good argument that they are the best at each of their positions at offensive line. So they really only had that center position and right guard, I guess you could say. And they have Cam Jurgens. I know they're going to try him out at center. He played guard last year, uh, but obviously with Jason, he was going to be the center. But he is a natural center, Cam Jurgens. So he's going to get tried out there at center this year. And the right guard position, that's one where... Um, it's going to be a little bit dicey where they find them. And I think, to Eric's point, I don't think it would have hurt definitely to not look and explore that opportunity to get another good offensive lineman. But um, I think they're going to be good in that department. And in terms of the running back with Saquon Barkley, um, was it worth signing him and letting DeAndre Swift go? I do agree that Swift was good for them. I think he was very good for them. He had his first 1,000-yard season, if I'm not mistaken, or he was very close to it with the Philadelphia Eagles. I was surprised that he wasn't re-signed, but I think where they are at this point in their careers and what they are, um, where they are considered in terms of hierarchy, in terms of running backs, I think most people would say that Saquon was worth it. Um, I think he is just a better player overall, Saquon, but again, those injuries do scare me, and I think it is a legitimate concern, but when you have that opportunity especially to stick it in the face of the Giants and take away their best player. You got to love it. I love the pettiness. And uh, if they had the opportunity not only to get better at that position, but to make a division rival worse, they were definitely going to do it. And I really like that they did it um, because of those reasons. And with this team being so good, with this team being so good and being so hyped up at this point, I think anything less than an NFC championship game for them, adding Saquon, like you said, Eric, and where they just are talented all over the field. Not getting to the NFC Championship game at least would be a failure in my opinion. And they're not, they shouldn't be considered the favorites. I know DraftKings has them as the third favorite. And I would probably agree with that because I'm more of a guy of, I want to see it all, how it all fits together before I give out a prediction like that. I think the 49ers are prob probably rightly the rightful favorites right now because they are so consistent with it. But the Eagles are coming. They're almost here, actually, with how good they are. It shouldn't take too long before they are 
right up there in, as one of the best teams in the NFL. And I'm excited to see those games with the 49ers, with the Detroit Lions getting better. The Packers aren't a team to sleep on anymore. This is going to be a very exciting season in the NFC, and I'm looking forward to it with what Lane Johnson had to say and with just my overall thoughts on the Philadelphia Eagles. But with saying that, we're going to leave that segment there. And we have one more thing to talk about, some news that broke this week, that the Panthers got the approval to renovate their stadium, $800 million going into this renovation. What went into it? What are the little details about who is paying what with this renovation and what does it mean for the Panthers going forward? More on that topic when we return. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 